it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing with you this cupcake folded die set from the Stamps of Life, which will be available on hsn.com. So if you're interested in this die set, you'll need to head over to hsn.com, do a search for the Stamps of Life and see if it's up there. This die set will make an A2 size card shaped like a cupcake, but you can also use it in a scrapbook page and you can also use it on a card front. So you don't have to make it out of a car, out of the card out of the actual cupcake shape. You can just die cut it and use your pretty papers and put it together and put it on a card front. So let me show you what this die set includes. So you have your large shadow layer for your cupcake and then you also have these two dies. So this die will cut out the top of your cupcakes. You can use this for any color pattern paper that you want for your top or solid colored cardstock. And then this will make the bottom. Now, if you want to include lines like an actual cupcake holder, you will need to use these two dies together. So this die will need to be inserted into this die as you run this through your die cut machine. Now, technically you can actually die cut this top out of separate paper than you would here. Um, most more than likely you're not going to die cut the whole thing out of the same colored cardstock or pattern paper. So you can use a separate sheet of paper here as you do a separate sheet of paper for the bottom. And then if you want to actually have the liner, which I just did a sample here um, out of some green cardstock, this will actually, if you put these together, it will die cut the liner just like this. But if you do not use that die, it will die cut it with just this solid um, cardstock as you see here. Okay, so those two will be used together and then you have this top portion that you can use for just an outline around your cupcake at, for the frosting and then you have these two pieces. You have some stars and you have some circles that you can use to decorate maybe for sprinkles on your cupcake. So I'm going to start out by making a shaker card and I'm going to have my card base B, the powdered sugar, which is the white cardstock, and you can choose to have it open from the top or open from the side. It's really up to you how you want your shaker to open. So I think I'm going to go ahead and have mine open from the side. So I'm going to put the fold of my cardstock immediately to the right of the edge of the die. And this is the left edge of the die. And I'm just going to tape this down. And I'm just gonna cut off some of this excess because I could save that. And then run this through my die cut machine. So here is my card base. I just took it out of the die cut machine. So I'm just gonna take the washi tape off of that. And you can see it is four and a quarter by five and a half. That is the size and it is shaped like a cupcake. So you can also see how the side, this flat edge, it doesn't have the, um, you know, the oval shape to it that the rest of the card does. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this die again and you're gonna die cut it out of a solid piece of the same color, or if you wanna do a different color, that's up to you, cardstock, and then that will layer directly on top, just like that. Then you'll get your rounded edge. So I'm gonna set this aside, that's my card base, and I'm gonna be working on this to decorate my cupcake. So here I'm going to use this layering die and I'm gonna die cut the top part out of the sprinkles cardstock, and actually pattern paper, and this is from the Love You collection. And I just love how it has the sprinkles on it because I don't have to actually put actual sprinkles on it or decorate it because it has that. I think that's really neat. And then for the bottom part, I'm going to take this piece of cardstock, which is a sea glass, so here I'm just layering them up and I'm gonna plug this piece in and we'll put some washi tape just to hold that in place and we'll run that through our die cutting machine. And so here are the pieces you get after that is run through your die cutting machine. Now, if you wanted to have a layering piece behind that, you can then take this same die and you can just die cut a layering piece to put underneath this and you can see you can have two different color papers here, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna just stick this right onto my shadow layer and then I will just have the white in the background. So this die, remember, will cut out the border as well as the inside layer. 
So you'll have both of these pieces. We're not gonna be using this piece today. And I'm just gonna be working with the border because I am doing a shaker card and that's what I need is to have that border and then I'm gonna put my shaker bits inside there. So in order to give this some dimension, in order to put your shaker bits in there, we need to die cut this multiple times to create that dimensional look. Now, sometimes when you use shake, do shaker cards, you may, and I have shown this on some previous videos in the past, you can actually die cut your top layer out of cardstock and then everything underneath you would die cut out of foam. So you would use this die and die cut it out of double-sided foam and then pop that up and put that on top. However, I'm not gonna be doing that today. Instead, I'm going to be using multiple layers of cardstock to give this a dimensional look. So, and these are all tangled up. So. In other words, and you'll see as I go through this, I'm going to layer all of these pieces of cardstock, and this is all the same color, on top of each other by gluing one on top of the other. And that is gonna build up my wall so that I can put my shaker bits inside. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of the lemonade cardstock cut out of this. Now you may not need all seven. It depends how big your shaker bits are that you're gonna put in here. If you have larger shaker bits, you're gonna want to build up your wall by cutting several layers of cardstock. It'll wanna be um, much higher, much deeper. But if your shaker bits are much smaller, you're not gonna need as many pieces. So you really need to, to make that determination for yourself. So we would layer up the six pieces and then the seventh piece will go over top of the adhesive, um, not the adhesive, of the acetate um, that we, to just kind of give it a nice finished look. So let's go ahead and go through that and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So get all your die cutting done and then we will then take it from here. So next I'm going to ink up some of the edges. So this is candy, the candy color cardstock. I'm gonna ink that up with the candy ink. This is the sea glass, which I'm gonna ink this up with the sea glass ink. So I've inked up the edges and now I'm going to take these layering pieces and I'm going to start building up my layers and I am using the Tombow liquid glue and I like this glue because once I adhere it down, number one, it's clear, and number two, since I'm layering a whole bunch of these same die cut pieces, and I wanna make sure that I get them exactly right on top of each other, this glue gives me time to reposition if I need to. Next, I am going to take my last layer. So I have already put six layers on top of there. I'm gonna sit, take my last layer and layer this on top of a piece of acetate. So I'm just going to add some glue to the back. I'm just pressing it on top of a piece of acetate. Okay, I'm gonna take my block and I'm just gonna rest that on there and just let that dry for just a moment. All right, so once you think that that is dry enough, you will just lift your acrylic block up 
flip this over. Now this was a larger piece of acetate, so I'm just gonna cut this down to a square, set that piece aside. And I am going to just trim this down. So I'm just using my scissors and I'm just trimming off all of this excess acetate. Now before I add any shaker pieces to that, I'm going to put a word die within here. Just gonna say happy birthday. So I'm gonna be using my sea glass cardstock. I'm just gonna trim this down to size. And I'm gonna take some double-sided adhesive tape and I'm just going to put this on the back of the cardstock before I run this die through my die cut machine. Now, if you didn't have a die that fits, if you had a stamp instead, you can definitely stamp something in here. The only problem is, it would be very difficult to stamp something in here after you've adhered all these layers. So if you want to stamp something, my advice to you is to stamp it before adding all of these thick layers of the outline of your cupcake. So I went ahead and die cut the happy birthday. So, and it does have the double-sided adhesive. So I'm not gonna press it fully down because I wanna be sure that I have everything where I, where it's not overlapping because you are limited in your space here. So I'm just gonna kinda place it and make sure that nothing's overlapping with anything before I press it fully down. All right, I think that looks good. So I wanted to be sure that the T and the Y were not overlapping. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that down and that it was not conflicting here with this, with this corner. So press that down and now we're ready to add some shaker bits inside. So if you didn't have any actual shaker bits, you can use these pieces that came out of these dies. You have your stars and your circles and you can see what they look like. So here's the stars. So you can definitely use these as shaker bits or the circles. You can also use these just as sprinkles if you weren't doing a shaker card and just do them maybe in different colors and put them on top of your cupcake. So I just wanted to show you what those look like, although I'm not gonna be using them today. So I'm gonna set those aside. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this top portion of my cupcake and I'm gonna go ahead and fill this with some of my shaker pieces. And I've already chosen some colors that closely match the colors of the cardstock that I have chosen. So I have some pinks and some of the blue, like in the sea glass. And I'm also gonna put in some of the yellow. And I'm just gonna spread that out. And I'm just gonna rest this piece with the acetate on top here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I need to make sure that when I move this around, that these shaker pieces will actually move. Because if they don't move, or if this piece does not sit on tightly, then that means that I need to add my layers up. Because maybe I've chosen some shaker bits that are a little bit bigger than the amount of layers of cardstock that I have. And if that's the case, I would need to add more layers. And this is, the this is your opportunity to do so. So because this is such a large piece, I'm just gonna add some more shaker bits in here because I do want this a little bit full. I don't want it to look empty. All right, so once you have what you want in there, then you can go ahead and take this top piece and you can add your glue to the back and you can go ahead and add it to the top of your shaker. Now what I'm gonna do is instead of adding glue directly to the back of this piece, I'm actually gonna add my glue to the top of this cardstock, okay? And that way I know it's where it needs to be and then I can just put this piece on top and I'll be good to go. So I'm actually just using a different type of glue and you probably could choose your Tombow glue, but I'm just choosing to use a little bit of a stronger glue. This one dries a little bit more quicker. This is my Art Glitter Glue. And like I said, if you have started with the Tombow glue and you've used that in the past, you can use that for this part. I'm just choosing to go with a different glue just because that's what I wanna do. 
So I'm just adding some glue. Try and go very light on your glue. And then come here and take your acetate and pop that down. And I'm just gonna get my finger up under here because some of this glue is seeping out into my acetate and I definitely don't want that to happen. So now I'm gonna take my acrylic block, just rest that on there. Actually, let me come under here real quick. And just get some of that. And while that is drying, I am gonna go ahead and add my um, cupcake liner or the holder to the bottom of this white cardstock. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and just add this to the top of my card while that is sitting there drying. And then I will add that piece to the top afterwards. So just line that up with your card base. Press that down. All right, I'm gonna come in with this piece and I'm gonna add that. So that's gonna go right there on top. So here is my finished card. So I just love how this turned out. This is the perfect die for making a shaker, all those fun shaker bits inside. So again, if you didn't wanna put the happy birthday on the inside, you can always do something on the outside or on top of the acetate or even on the inside and then just have all your fun shakers on the inside. And again, if you don't wanna make a shaker, you can just do your, use your dies and cut different patterns out of your cardstock and your pattern paper and just use paper. You don't have to use this for a shaker card. next card I am going to make just a regular card no shaker and I have a piece of chocolate um, cardstock that I die cut this top layering piece out of this is going to be a chocolate flavored cupcake and next I'm going to take these two pieces layer them in and I am going to die cut this fun pattern paper so I want to make sure that my die is lined up I'm just gonna put some washi tape there. This paper is from the Grateful Collection. And I'll be running this through my die cut machine. And then that gives you this piece here. And then I want a piece that layers in the background. So I'm gonna take this piece again and die cut it on a solid piece of cardstock. And I chose to use the guava. So these two pieces are going to layer just like that. Next, you're gonna take this die, and I wanna have an outline here for the frosting, and I die cut another piece of guava cardstock, and when you're die cutting this, make sure you have the double-sided adhesive on the back side. It'll just be easier to adhere to your cupcake if it does have the double-sided adhesive on the back. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere these pieces together. Now, I should have put double-sided adhesive on the back of this cupcake liner, but I didn't, so I am going to be gluing it down, which it's okay because there's nothing really too intricate about this die cut piece. So then just make sure that your layers are even. And then press those down. This piece is going to be peeled back just make sure all those little holes are out of there. Here's one that didn't, that kind of stuck to the cardstock. So let me get that out. And then that will pop on just like this. Okay, so there's my two cupcake pieces. Next, I wanna add some sprinkles here to the inside. So I'm going to use the colors that are in this cardstock. So I have some sea glass, it could be ocean. They're, both of those colors are very similar. I have guava. And I also have green apple in this particular cardstock. And if you ever need to know what colors they are, it always says it on the bottom of your paper pad, the colors that coordinate with that paper. So I'm going to die cut. I'm gonna use the star dies and I wanna make sure that I have double-sided adhesive on the back of the cardstock before I run this through so I can just stick them on. 
and this guava piece is from the inside that already has double-sided adhesive so i'll go ahead and run this through one time and then i will get two more pieces of cardstock one in the green apple one in the ocean and i will um, run those through with double-sided adhesive using the same die so when those come out of the die cut machine you can just go ahead and start placing your stars where you want them So this is gonna be my cupcake. Now I'm gonna put this on a card front. So let's go ahead and get that card, card ready. So I'm gonna be making a background here for my um, card and I'm gonna be using a slimline die. This is the slimline die, it's from the Stamps of Life. This is a layering piece, which I just die cut, die cut out of the powdered sugar cardstock. And I'm going to be creating my own pattern paper using this stamp set. It's the Happy Birthday for HSN stamp set. And it has all kinds of birthday um, sentiments on here. So I'm going to be using a whole bunch of these to make my background. And if you don't have the slimline dies, you can simply just cut a piece of cardstock. This layer, you can just cut your paper to eight and a quarter by three and a quarter. So three and a quarter this way, eight and a quarter this way. So you don't necessarily need to have this die to do it. And when you're making your actual slimline card base, if you don't have the die set, you can just take your regular um, eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock, cut it down to eight and a half by seven and score it at three and a half and it will be your card base that you can layer this on top. All right, so I'm just gonna be using some stamping blocks and I'm gonna be stamping this out. This cupcake is going to be on here. So I want to um, have some of these stamps just kind of all around. So that'll be similar to something like that. And I think if I just put some of these stamps like make a wish and some of the others on here, that would be a cute background. So let's go ahead and get these stamped out. And I'm just looking at them. Some of the small ones I'm not gonna use and probably some of the bigger ones I won't use, but I'm thinking like maybe the high cupcake. I'll use that and the let's celebrate would be a good one because I don't have a whole lot of room on here. So I'm just kind of thinking how I want to put these. All right, so I kind of have an idea of how I want these because I put those stamps in the location where I want them. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a piece of just regular scratch paper underneath because some of these stamps are gonna go off the page. And let me go ahead and remove this. And let's go ahead and start stamping. I am gonna be using the same colors that are in this card, in this pattern paper. So I'm using some guava, green apple, and ocean ink. And I'm just gonna test the stamp out before I stamp it onto my layer. So there's the let's celebrate. All right, so I was just positioning everything how I wanted it to go. I'm gonna add some of these stars that I had left over just to fill in some of the white area. And you can see that I have my card base already cut out. That is a slimline card base. So if you, again, if you don't have the slimline card dies, that's okay because you can just take a regular piece of cardstock, cut it to eight and a half by seven, and score it at three and a half inches, and you have your card base. All right, so there's the front of the card. I think I incorporated a whole bunch of sentiments on there. I think that looks really great. So now I'm gonna open it up. I have one more sentiment I'm gonna use. This is the wishing you a birthday filled with all of your favorite things. And I am going to stamp that up with some chocolate ink. And I think I'll go ahead and just add these last couple of stars in here since 
I already had them cut out. Oh, that one's a little too far. Let's see if I could switch this. There we go. All right, so there's the inside, very simple. And then there is the front. I think that turned out super cute. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And make sure you subscribe to my channel for more card making inspiration. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.